G'day guys, I'm Ross, I'm a boat builder from Australia and I'm building a 40 foot catamaran out of fiberglass foam core materials and uh, from a mould I bought two and a half years ago. Now I'm in a world of trouble as you can see here, I've got stuff going on, I've got bulkheads and modules and rooms and staterooms and you name it, it's all happening in here. So follow along on my channel, don't forget to like the videos, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell because you're not going to get notified if you don't, you must click the bell and, uh, and I'd appreciate it if you follow along and share it out to all your friends. Thanks for joining. I've come to the conclusion and it's, I've done a bit of research here with my crash bulkheads. I'm really concerned that I'm never going to be able to drain any um, condensation or, you know, any unlikely event of got leakage in there. I'm not going to be able to drain it. And I've confirmed that the plans, uh, the original plans for the boat, and they had a drain system in it. So uh, funnily enough, a couple of weeks ago when I was racing on Ron's boat up in his uh, Seawind 1160, which is uh, in survey, I noticed that he had a drain coming out of this to reason that it would be common sense to put one in before I go gluing my floors down. Just one of those extra jobs I wanna make sure that I can get access to now before I you know, ultimately close this thing down. And I'm getting closer and closer every day, but seriously, once this is down, I've got no comeback. It's gonna be an absolute nightmare to fix. So that's what I'm gonna do. The sea wind boat uh, that I was in, he used PVC pipe as the drain and a ball valve at the end. Now, that makes so much sense to me using PVC pipe. It's pressure tested for, uh, obviously for water systems, but it also is pressure tested uh, and it will be able to be pressure tested in the bulkhead here. So what I've come up with is these um, new ball valves. I mean, these are the winner. They're basically waterproof, they're airproof, and, uh, and using a pressure rated pipe such as this one here, which is actually, it says pressure rated. Um, I'm pretty much covering all my bases. The only thing is I need to now put a, uh, put a hole in the bottom of my crash bowl, get as close to the bottom as I can get so that, I, you know, in the, in the event that we do get water in there, I can actually drain it out. I don't want water in there and not being able to drain it out. That would be uh, pretty counterproductive. So I can drain it down into the bilge that I'm standing into here and, uh, and out via a bilge pump. So any condensation, any moisture, anything that ends up in there will ultimately be able to be drained. Okay, so looking down in the crash bowl here, you can see here I've got a skin fitting. I'm going to basically hole saw a hole. I'm not going to uh, take it all the way to the bottom. I'm not going to modify the skin fitting I decided, um, provided I can get to within, you know, that last centimetre of water. I think that's going to be adequate. By taking it right to the very bottom, I think I could run into other problems. So... Um, that's what I'm going to do. Basically, leave it about a centimetre from the bottom, and that way I'm not modifying the bulkhead and I'm not interfering with the tabbing that's already in there. So that will be on that side, and then I'll have a, a similar skin fitting on this side, excepting the pipe. So on the uh, the aft side of that bulkhead, oh, it's a bit tight down in here. Uh, I'm going to drill through right there, which leaves it about a centimetre off the floor on the inside but uh, that'll be more than enough. I mean, it's only ever gonna be an emergency that I'll be draining this out. A couple of little spiders running around in here. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna hold saw that out now. And Uh, oh, it's a bit hard to film because I'm in underneath the tripod here, but here's a skin fitting I'm going to apply. I'm going to put one in both sides, so that basically is going to go in like that, and that'll be epoxied in place from the outside. And similarly on the other side, there's another one down there, and they mate perfectly in the centre. I've just got to make sure that I don't leave a bead of epoxy in there and then my tube will simply go in there and drain out into the uh, into the build. Okay, so I've got my drain in my crash bulkhead and I've had a bit of an epiphany. I was uh, standing in there earlier on before I lifted the bulkhead out and I was standing in the forward, I guess you call it, wardrobe in the front of the cabin 
And one thing I noticed was that I had to crouch right down to get into that cupboard. Now I'm six foot two and a half, almost six three, and you know, I'm not a small guy. And um, for me to go into a, a locker like that um, is gonna be akin to having an MRI. So I've come to the conclusion that now that I've finished these builders, that I might modify it. Um, it's important that you understand here, guys, I'm not just modifying for the sake of it and, you know, and, and because I didn't plan in the beginning. This is actually is not in the plan, what I'm planning to do here. What I'm planning to do is from this point on, now right here, we have a bulkhead across here, across that line there, um, with a door in it and forward of that, which is only around 18 inches or I'd say 40 centimeters, I guess, or maybe a little bit more, 50 centimeters, there's a platform there where you can stand inside the wardrobe and access storage both above the crash bulkhead and up into the side of, uh, of the forward storage area. So it makes sense that I try to get as much headroom in there so that it's going to be an easy storage to use. Well, I'm down here in the squeeze, man. I'll tell you, it is the squeeze down here. Uh, we've got the plumbing in, and you can see those lines here that I've uh, drawn here. That's where the new floor is going to be. It's going to drop down about uh, 180 mil, so around about sort of eight, nine inches of step tread uh, to give me a little bit more headroom up in there. What I need to do is, is sand away the flow coat along these lines here and then uh, um, epoxy with the Technoglue, with the uh, Methacrylate glue, the angles back into place that I removed from up here. And then I'm gonna have to put one along the back there. And then I'll have to modify the floor. And before I do that, I'm gonna glass that pipe in or I'm gonna uh, epoxy the, the skin fittings on either side. And then I'll be able to complete that. The pipe can go in later on, as long as I can get this, uh, this floor new step tread sorted out today uh, should be able to come in tomorrow and then uh, basically glass these angles in but yeah I've got it's getting pretty late in the day I've had a big day today and um, yeah I just want to get this part prepared so that I can come in and just just epoxy it up and get it done all right so I've just tacked that in with some screws it's pretty level it doesn't look level but I think it is I just ran a spirit level across it and it's level um, I've got to now just mix up some epoxy. I've got a couple of jobs to do. I'm going to do the those um, skin fittings in there. So I've got to fill that void and the foam core up there with epoxy. And then uh, I've got to remove these guys and then screw them in place and leave them overnight until I can come back and work on them tomorrow. But yeah, that's going to work a treat. That's, uh, that's given us a step down into that forward robe. I mean, I've roughed them up, I've given them a good sand up. I've also caught out the foam in the hole there. And you'll see here that I've actually sanded around the actual rim of the hole. I didn't want to completely sand around the flow coat because I'd like to keep it looking good. Um, but once that's glued in, it's going to seal to the face as well as the inside of the hole with all the epoxy I'm going to put in there. So time to get that in. It's going to be a bit hard to film, I think. So I'm just going to give this a little clean. <coughs> with some acetone, just to make sure I get a really good bond with that face. And similarly on the other side, I'm gonna get a bit of clean. I'm gonna mix up a brew here of uh, the Technoglue that I'm using here. It's the, the filming's actually harder than building a goddamn boat. I'm not joking. Not a, so. Quite restfully. <laughs> Sit on a piece of angle. Jesus. Got a permanent barcode on my ass from sitting on this stuff. It's like a bruise about that big. It's like a barcode. It actually looks like a barcode. Got no bloody padding on my ass anymore because I've lost a bit of weight and uh, yes, I'm feeling it. Every time I sit down. But I'm not going to show you the barcode on my ass. That just wouldn't be good. And the first challenge is to fill, that's it's a challenge to get the iron squeezed in here, is to fill this void. And at least it has ah, some vertical 
sort of holding properties. All right, so I'm going to make sure that I'm getting that totally sealed to uh, reduce any chance of any sort of water getting in there and delaminating this bulkhead. So I'm pretty happy with how that core looks. Um, it was a stinker to get to, it was like I was head first. Almost ended up my legs up there. Um, and what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put a fair amount on the inside here, just to ensure that I get the, the proper seal. And this one's gonna be inserted from the inside of the crash bulkhead and I can just reach it. So it's pretty lucky in that respect that I've got long arms. This is where you need a small child to uh, feed in. I used to feed my son Sam into small compartments like this <laughs> when I was making kayaks. Poor kid, I used to shove him into all different types of compartments with a sh a s with a with a sh um, with a wrench and say, "Tighten up that bolt." <sighs> all right, so that is looking really good. Um, I'm never going to get this perfect, but I'm actually going to put this in, and once it's in, I'm going to hold it in place. There's no way I can clamp it, so I need to make sure that it goes in once. You're not going to see it, I'm afraid. Well, that was surprisingly easy. <laughs> it just went in. You got it, one of the set. And then I'm going to put this one in here, and physically make that in that hand with the other one. You can see how I've got quite a considerable amount of squeeze out here so that indicates to me that I've got plenty of epoxy in there and then I'm going to do a, a nice little lip around here and then I'll clean it up because I really don't want that too much stuff down there okay so here's my new step here I'm just going to make a quick template um, good way to make templates if you've got like strips of MDF or something is just get four pieces of MDF, hot glue them together and uh, you know it can be that simple, sometimes it's not that easy but uh, it is a good method, sort of gives you a quick uh, chance of getting a template, it's pretty quick, pretty uh, painless and just a hot glue gun solves your issue. Gotta say, I miss being down the bilge. Not. <laughs> well, there is my floor template. And uh, here's my remaining piece of floor here. So you can see what a difference the, uh, the size will be. It's quite substantial. So what I'm likely to do is retain one side to save putty. And, uh, and that way, I'm maintaining the straight edge on the back. And yep, that's uh, pretty much going to be perfect. I'll just draw a line on that, cut it, and I'm back in business. Okay, so there's my step in place. Um, I'm going to test it. <laughs> oh. So it's not much, but it's enough to get my head height in this in this cabin. So a big effort, but certainly worth it in the long run. I mean, when I'm out at sea and the boat's roaring around and bouncing and nose diving, I want to be able to walk into that front cabin and ensure that I can at least think straight in there and not have to duck over and, and crawl like I do with every other space in this bloody thing. This is our front yard this week. It's like a parking lot. <laughs> We've got uh, uh, 30 people here for five days. Here we are at the caravan park in uh, Jervis Bay. We're charging it out, $100 a night at the caravan park here. This is the most expensive caravan park in Australia. Caravan, like caravan. <laughs> yeah, this is our driveway this weekend. 
So there's 30 people here for four days. We're on uh, a septic pump out system, which means that we collect all of our sewerage uh, and I've got a 10,000 litre capacity and I gauge the success of Christmas on how many litres we pump out. So on Thursday night or Friday morning this year, so Christmas is today, Wednesday, tomorrow or Friday morning, I expect to pump out 9,999.9 litres of sewerage. So relating that to a boat, um, I think that gives me about sort of a day's storage given I've only got 180 litres of blackwater storage but yeah up there is chaos down here is really peaceful so I really enjoyed a little bit of a respite from the uh, the masses up in the house but yeah having a great time with the family so I'm just gonna wander up here and, and just show you the chaos so we've got Bet and Chrissy two boys in their Santa suits Check out these guys, eh? What a classic. And Bet, say hello to your fans again, Mum. <laughs> Mum's my clickbait. The kitchen's heaving over here. Oh, it's all happening. There's just dogs and people everywhere. And all hell just broke loose because Matt's arrived. With 50,000 more, Brett. 50,000 more. Merry Christmas, brother. Merry Christmas, bro. My little brother, Brett, you'd all remember him. Oh, and David. Yeah, we know David. No one likes David. Everyone loves David, but no one likes him. It's like me. You gotta love me because I'm family, but you don't like me because I'm a cranky prick. Hello, Lee. Hello, darling. Hello, Thank Ellen. You know Look at the cranky old men down in there. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. Okay, welcome to Bad Santa 2019. There's 28 of us here. Brett and Sam are going to explain the rules. I'm number 28. Can you bring the camera to Ross? There you go. So actually, Ross has introduced himself as number 28, which yeah. means he's the most hated person here today. <laughs> he gets the pick of whatever he wants. Rigged. Sam, his son, loving son, is number one. <laughs> <laughs> Most loved person. Oh. What that means is whatever Sam gets, forget it, he won't have it. So <laughs> anybody after Sam can have whatever he wants. You cannot have the same present twice. They're the rules. Take whatever you want from whoever was before you. It's not clear. Whatever, whoever comes before you, you can take their present. You can take anyone's present. But you cannot take the same present That's twice. Right. Yeah, That's right. They are the rules. Yeah. Boom! Before I open. I'm sure all of you have been thinking about this for two years and figuring out your game plan. It's kind of like Survivor. And the last thing you want to do is draw number one, which unfortunately I have. So, I thought, you know what, let's start this game with a bang. Usually you pick your, a different person, but I thought I'd pick one of ours. Oh, uh, do you know what's in it? Must be good. That's yeah. too bad. No, it's bad. 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 Oh, it's bad. 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 Can you believe my daughter just went for a bottle of what? Rum. 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 Okay. You're not allowed to drink until you're 45. Yeah. You're rubbing it up well. Yeah. Glasses. It's an all family Christmas uh, um, traditions. We have a $40 limit on what we can buy for. Uh, each present we generally buy what we'd really like ourselves but there was a couple of there that were worth quite a lot more than that and uh, it was funny it, it stops us buying all that uh, um, unnecessary stuff and ultimately hopefully everybody ends up with something of value but it was funny and it, and it just goes on and on and on and unfortunately you've got to end it because it could go on for hours because even though I was number 28 I ended up with uh, 
with a with a present that I really did want, and then it was snatched away from me at the last second. So, yeah, great idea. Uh, it's lovely. It really is a great way for us to share our time together, and uh, and we love every second of it. It's an incredibly crazy time, and there's a little bit more here for you to enjoy. Amazing. Betty is bad Santa. <laughs> come down to this, as we all expected. <laughs> all those years you've been purporting to be a good centre. Number 20 out of 28. Number 28, I have like a smorgasbord of choice here. You had to yeah. definitely do. You've got to have a quick wander. Right. Right. Do the right thing by everybody. Does someone want to film? I should ship it for Ellen. <laughs> 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 I took the teapot from yeah. Dad. So I, I think there's such a good choice. I can't believe the quality of the presents. And, mm. and for $40, really you get a lot these days. Oh, yeah. that. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Day three of the 35 person Festivus. Sam's cooking for an army here, aren't you, mate? Yep. How's it going? Military chef. Military chef. He's got the, the short order thing going on here. It's, uh, yeah, the pressure. <laughs> it's just a continual food fest, isn't it, boys? Look at this. We've got animal. We've got animal here from the Muppets. And Beaker. <laughs> Full on, friggin' full on. We're all knackered, we're not sleep we're sleeping, but we're not sleeping much. But yes. Here's Gailey doing our bakery run. Look at the food, holy god. Ellen, what are you eating? All the veggies. Look at you veggies. All the vegetarians in the family now. My, the world has changed. How many mushies, Harry? This is Martha and Michael. Eminem. Start swearing and rapping in a minute. A four of the festivals that continues. Got Brett here with the uh, dueling, Brett and Matt with their dueling pizza ovens. And uh, these are amazing. These run on the pellets like you guys have around the States. There's little fire pellets, uh, little pizza ovens, but these guys are into it. Oh, Janice has brought me some pizza. Nothing can describe the craziness of Christmas, but mate, I'm the luckiest guy. Ooh. 